No matter what type of story you're writing, you have to pick a point of view to tell it from. Today I'm going to explain all the different types of POVs, and I'm going to help you pick the right one for you. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer and welcome to my writing channel. Today I'm going to be talking about narrative point of view. And when I talk about narrative POV, I mean things like first person, second person, third person, that kind of stuff. Every story needs a point of view, you cannot get around that. So today I'm going to give you some tips on that, I'm going to explain the different types of POVs, then I'm going to give you an example that illustrates the difference between the most popular ones, and I'm also going to close out the video by giving you some warnings on how not to use your POVs. So let me start off by explaining explaining the most popular POVs. The first one we're going to talk about is first person and this is the most obvious one out there. I think everybody understands this one more or less because pretty much everyone has written either a letter or a journal entry or a diary or a first person fiction story. Whatever it is, we know what first person is. We understand it because it's, it's I and it's me and it's from the perspective of the character in their heads. We're right under their skin. We get their perspective immediately and intimately. There is nothing else that we get. We only have their knowledge of the situation. We only have their experiences. We only see what they see. And this point of view can have a lot of different advantages. Now, one of the key drawbacks to first person stories is that the word I keeps appearing over and over and over again. So if you are writing a story in first person, pay attention to how much the letter I appears in your story. If it starts off every single sentence, maybe try rearranging your sentences for a little variety. Now I'm going to skip second person for now because second person is a little weird. We're going to move right into third person and there are three main types of third person people. POVs. And the first one is third person limited. This is basically the same thing as first person. A lot of people, you know, they think third person has to be radically different from first, but it can be essentially the same thing. And when third person limited point of view, you are limiting your point of view to one character at a time and you are keeping us in that one character's head, just like you would if you were writing in first person. The key difference is that instead of saying I or me, you are going to say the character's name or you're going to say their third person pronoun. So for instance, instead of saying, I went into the castle, I killed the king, the guards came after me, you would say, Jamie Lannister went into the castle, he killed the king, the guards came after him. Same thing, it's, it, you're going to have the same perspective, you're going to have the same, you can use the same voice, you can use the same attitude, you can have the same you know, thought processes, whatever it is, you can bring everything that you have in first person point of view into third person. The next type of third person point of view is third person omniscient. And this means third person all knowing. Basically your narrator has godlike knowledge of the world you've built in this story. The narrator can jump from one character's perspective to another. The narrator can give us a history of the world at any time, even things that no character in the story knows. The narrator can predict the future for us. The narrator can get into the perspective of animals or alien species or inanimate objects or anything else else out there, there, is so, there are so many possibilities when it comes to third person omniscient. Now this might sound like a great deal, and it does if you know how to use it properly, but if you are writing in third person omniscient, it can be a lot of work because if you're jumping from different perspectives all the time, and you're, you're going from one person's mind to another, and you're showing all these different thought processes, that's a lot of writing. That can really fill up the pages and it can be exhausting for your readers if you don't do it properly. So keep that in mind and remember that sometimes overloading your readers with everything you know about your story world isn't the best way of telling your story. Now the final type of third person point of view is third person objective. Basically what it is, it's when you have a third person story that is told as if from a camera's lens. And by that I mean you are showing your readers what's going on, but you're not telling them any internal thoughts or biases or opinions that your characters have. You're not giving a long history of the world or you're not looking into the future. You're basically stripping everything down into what you can see, hear, feel, taste, touch, etc. If you want to write a story where you're readers have to do some work and they have to, you know, make judgments based on how your characters interact with each other and you don't want to tip them off to what's going on inside their heads, this can be an effective point of view. Next I'm going to give you an example to illustrate how you can use different POVs to convey the same type of scene. I'm going to use an example that's built on a scenario that we see in a lot of detective stories like those old school film noirs. So here goes. Here's the first person example. 
I slumped into my office chair, desperate for a drink and a new client. Lucky me, I got the latter. Tall, blue dress, pretty face with dimples. She tiptoed over to my desk with a Louis Vuitton handbag clutched to her side. I hadn't seen one of those since I left Chicago. Are you Jack Pearson? The woman asked. Last I checked, yeah. What brings you here? The woman looked over both shoulders. I need your help. Next, I'm going to show you how to write the exact same scenario, but in third person limited. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to show you the changes. And as you can see, all I did was swap out the eyes and me's for Jack, him, he, that sort of thing. That was the only difference between the first person and the third person limited. Now I'm going to do that exact same paragraph in third person omniscient. And I'm not going to read the first paragraph here because nothing's going to change here. But after that paragraph, once the woman starts talking, it does change. So I'll pick it up right there. Are you Jack Pearson? The woman asked, though she knew exactly who he was. Last I checked, yeah. What brings you here? The woman looked over both shoulders. I need your help. What she really needed was to blame him for a murder. So if you notice, it's basically the same thing as third person limited, but we do get the woman's perspective. We, we get it in that first line of dialogue with her. She knew exactly who he was. We get inside her head there. Then we're right back into the, in the regular story. And then at the end, we get that finishing line where we see her intentions. What she really needed was to blame him for a murder. So that's, that's the kind of idea you can have there. In that first paragraph, we see what Jack is thinking. We see what he thinks of her. And then we see what she thinks of him. So if you do third person omniscient, that's something you can consider with the the different perspectives and how that could add tension to your story. And then finally, I'm going to do that same scene from third person objective or the camera lens perspective. Jack slumped into his office chair. He fixed his posture when a woman entered, tall, blue dress, dimpled face. She tiptoed over to his desk with a Louis Vuitton handbag clutched to her side. Are you Jack Pearson? The woman asked. Last I checked, yeah. What brings you here? The woman looked over both shoulders. I need your help. So in this example, we cut out people's thoughts, we cut out opinions, we cut out everything except what we can see, what we can, you know, just put in front of the reader as if we were filming it through a camera lens. We don't learn that Jack is desperate for a drink and a client, but we see him sit, fix his posture when the woman walks in. That lets us know he's interested, tall, blue dress, dimpled face. If you notice, we cut out the word pretty in front of dimpled face because we don't want to give that opinion there. We want the readers to infer it from his actions and the dialogue between the two of them. And if you notice, the dialogue stays the same that's just you know clear-cut things it, there, there's nothing biased about it or anything like that it is what it is it's just reporting the facts and then of course the rest of the story basically stays the same you're just taking away the the inner thoughts you're taking away the opinions and things like that so I hope that example helped. Before I wrap up this video, I want to give you some warnings on some common POV mistakes and other issues that people have with it. First thing I want to bring up is when you have multiple POVs in a story. I mentioned this a little earlier in the video, but whenever you do have multiple POVs, especially if you're doing like third person limited where you have one character in chapter one, then another in chapter two and so on. If you're ever doing something like that, make sure you open up those chapters with some kind of signal who is the point of view character. And you can do this by simply naming the chapter after the character, like in Game of Thrones, if you ever read the books, every chapter has a character's name at the very start of it, so we know whose POV we're in. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to you know, stick to chapter numbers and things like that, that's fine. But in, in the first sentence or the first paragraph, hint at who hint at whose perspective we're getting. So if, if your main character, if his name is Bob, make sure that, that chapter opens up with Bob walked into this, or Bob thought about this, or whatever it is. Make sure we, we are clued in on who is the POV character if you are jumping between different POVs. One very important thing to be aware of, regardless of what POV you're using, is this technique called head hopping. Basically what head hopping is, if you have a scene where you have multiple characters and you're expressing the thoughts of all these different characters in that particular scene, it can potentially get confusing if you're jumping from one head to another. Now, this is totally acceptable in like a third person omniscient narrative because again you're, you're, you're from the perspective of an all-knowing narrator but if you are using third person limited or if you're using first person that can really throw off the reader and confuse them and just take them out of the story so you don't want to do that if you are in like a first person scenario your main character should not be reading the other characters minds I mean they can make assumptions about the other character that's fine but at the same time you don't want them just you know expressing thoughts that aren't their own it's just it's not the way to do things one other thing I want to talk about real quick is second person POV this is when you have a story that is told from the perspective of you 
you, you. And it, it might start out with something like, you walk up to the cash register with a gun, or you have never seen a sunset like this before in your life. These types of stories, they, they can be experimental, they can be pretty cool, or, you know, something unusual, but most most of the time they simply don't work and the reason why is because when you have a second person story the person who's reading it they're getting that you perspective and if you open a, a story like that and you say you walk up to a cash register with a gun and your reader is the type of person who would never walk up to a cash register with a gun that reader is going to be already distanced from the story. It's just not going to work. In some cases, second person can work. There are stories out there where it's totally effective. Usually these types of stories involve a main character who is so distanced from himself that that second person narrative actually highlights how distanced he is. If you're, if you're having a character with some kind of mental issues or maybe like some kind of drug problem or something like that, you may want to experiment with a second person story. But but for the most part, they can get really annoying for readers, so I would recommend sticking to either first person or one of the third person types. So I hope all this info helped. Question of the day, what is your favorite type of narrative POV to use in your stories? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, share this video with a friend if you don't mind, and as always, remember to keep on writing.